Yo, what's good, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Fun With Dumb. Today, we're catching up with a previous guest we've had, probably one of the first guests we've had on Fun With Dumb. Um, uh, before we get into our special guest, we got a uh, uh, our guest co-host here. You might have seen him on previous episodes, Richard Lee. Hey. It is very nice to be here today. AKA Lyrics, and I brought him along because uh, this guest today is a friend of both of ours, a young, if you will, young. You gotta put that little <laughs> saliva into it, young. Um, he is a chef, he is an author, and now a, a TV show host, yeah. actually, to uh, two shows. Um, this is like the third show uh, yeah. to add to the resume, right? And uh, we're here with <laughs> Chef Roy Choi. Yes, yes. Hey, yeah. Chef. <laughs> and all this shit's coming to me later in life, man. I can't take advantage of it, man. I can't take advantage of the celebrity I shit. I think, man. you know, I think, I th well, it, it <laughs> I need to be 25 when this shit happens. Yo, I, you know, what do you think we think? <laughs> we're <Yeah>. rappers. <laughs> 25. Yeah, no, I think about this because, uh, you know, uh, what you said is actually funny. Yeah. It's things that I think about, too, because you see these rapper rapper kids like mm -hmm. living living the life at like yeah. 18 17 but mm -hmm. also it's like at the same time there's a little sacrifice of giving up your youth and learning and making you know crazy mistakes yeah and i think about it too i mean like some of us are lucky to get a second life in many cases like you, if you think about like anthony bourdain he didn't blow up until he was 44 right, right. so everything you knew publicly about him was from 44 to 61 you know yeah and so there there are there are moments and opportunities where you hit it later in yeah, life, you know? yeah. I mean, it, yeah, and now it's like so. Let's talk a little bit about the things you've been really busy since the last <laughs> time we spoke. Actually, yeah. we need some updates, John. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, I got a lot of that. Yeah, we've been we're we are the Roy Choi's boys. Uh, yeah. I've been a Roy Choi boy for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get y'all on payroll. If I if, <laughs> if, if, if all of this stuff hits, then we could create yeah, a whole yeah. Yeah. the RCB clip. Oh, yeah, we, whole, we go clip. hard on the social media <laughs> yeah. for Roy Choi for sure, content. For sure. um, but yeah, there's there's been a lot of. Um, Things that's been happening, like uh, you have two TV shows that are out right now, currently at the same time. I knew the the KCET Broken Bread show, which is a little bit uh, more socially conscious, mm -hmm. I would say. And when that came out and you were shooting it, I didn't I didn't know about this other show that was going to come out on Netflix yeah. like yeah. weeks after yeah. your television show is on, um, and that's the Chef Show. And that is a little bit more fun, and um, yeah. I mean, not that broken bread isn't fun, but this yeah. is more like cooking with celebrities. Mm -hmm. um, right. It's it's pretty raw in its own way too, because there's no really segments or anything. Yeah. It's just you guys cooking. That's no. it. That's really it. It's like this. It's like a podcast. Right. Right. You know, it's like a podcast with camera and. It's just that uh, some of the guests are like Spider Man and Iron Man, and, <laughs> yeah, and, and Pepper Potts. You yeah, know? I mean, and, and it seems very casual, you know, yeah. like they're just like, oh, okay, we have this like, it's almost like, oh, we have this break of while shooting Avengers, let's just go to the kitchen yeah. and like cook something. Exactly, and that's because of the bridge of John Favreau, you know. Yeah, John, John's one of those um, amazing people that can pick up the bat phone right you know right um, just like you know our relationship right. like anytime you pick up the phone for me like i'm there for you and like john has that relationship with you know people across entertainment right so right. he can pick up he can pick up the phone and say like you know and then he'll only pick it up when he's got something solid you know right. so he'll right. pick it up and say you know i got this thing going you know we, robert downey jr Gwyneth Paltrow, whatever, can you well, sit down with me? That's know? important. I think you know this yeah. too after being in this game for so long and connecting through food. I remember, you know, you mentioned a story on the show about mm. bringing burritos to rap shows. Like, <laughs> I, I received one of those exactly. rap burritos. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You know, and, uh, I, and it's just interesting to see that because you build relationships that way and then yeah. your relationships become your greatest currency as you get older. 100%. You know, your networks. Like, but but I like what you just said about about how John reaches out once mm -hmm. he's ready mm -hmm. because that's so mm -hmm. important that's for so anybody important. who's doing anything right. Like if you're gonna approach and you have a plug for to make something happen, yeah, yeah, don't you know? You gotta prepare don't for that. Pull, shit. Don't pull that yeah, connect too soon. You right, know what right, I mean? Right, right, you have right. to be ready for that. And I like what you said about you know what I said about the burritos and stuff. It's like sometimes in our world today um, we get this tough guy syndrome where. We don't see the value in being um, taking care of people or being honest. You know, like sometimes you build relationships and you build your your credit with people by, you know, sometimes you got it. You got to be the the guy who holds the towel. You know, the to play to start on the on the court. You know, sometimes right. you got to pay your dues and like, 
you know, it's okay to do that. Doesn't mean you're any less of a person. You know, sometimes yeah. give, you know, taking care of people, looking out for people, bringing rap, even if they don't even exactly acknowledge it. Yeah, you know, you just keep your course, and it, it may break through. And nah, um, really but have. definitely getting ready, definitely being ready when being someone who is in a position now where I got some shit going right. on, like you know, anyone who's in a successful position will always have the time to listen to you if you're coming up. Yeah. Whether you're in a, a young cook, a young rapper, someone trying to make it in the art game, whatever, they'll always give you a shot. But if you're not, if you're not prepared, right. you're gonna lose that shot. Yeah, and you know? you, you got to realize that it's it, you can't just think that no one is you know fucking with you on yeah. on these things. You know, yeah. you got to realize that you know these are these are pros and experts in it. So if yeah. they're not ready to work with you, you know, because you, you guys are obviously we're friends. Mm -hmm. It's like, why isn't the OG working with me? And you yeah. can't just be mad about that. He must see something that yeah. you might not see. For sure. The preparation, you know? Exactly. But um, yeah. Not I mean, only that, they might be busy with their stuff too, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's really nunchi. Exactly. It, like yeah. everything we're talking about is nunchi. Sometimes you got to have the nunchi. Sometimes mm -hmm. you shouldn't have nunchi yeah. to kind of make that opportunity happen too. Yo, what's good, y'all? Did you know the average interest rate on credit card debt is over 19% APR? Have you looked at your interest rate lately? You don't need to be a financial expert to know that consolidating debt into a low fixed rate can save you thousands in interest. So pay off your high interest credit cards with a credit card consolidation loan from Lightstream. You can get a rate as low as 5.95% APR with auto pay, much lower than the national average interest rate on credit card debt. Get a loan from $5,000 to $100,000 with absolutely no fees. Yep, you heard that, zero fees. The application is 100% online and you can get even your money as soon as the day you apply. Lightstream believes that when you have good credit, you deserve a low rate and great service. And right now, I'm offering you guys a special offer just for my listeners. Apply today at lightstream.com slash fun and get an additional interest rate discount. That's lightstream.com slash fun for an additional discount. L-I-G-H-T-S-T r e a m dot com slash fun f u n and subject to credit approval rate includes 0 0.50 percent auto pay discount terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice visit lightstream.com slash fun for more information he and sometimes things take time and I, I and you know i i you know like sometimes like if you like if you came to me in this moment, if I didn't know you, or whatever, mm -hmm. and I was in this position, you came to me, and it was just a moment. You had a moment. You had right. thirty seconds for me to, to show me that you're the next one. You may kill it in that moment, whether it's an audition, just mm -hmm. on the street, just right. a freestyle. But maybe that moment just needs time. So that's where I don't want people to get frustrated. Like right. it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that what you just did didn't connect. It's got to ferment a little bit. You, you know? may have to, yeah. There are moments where it may have to ferment. <laughs> yeah, no, I no, mean, sure. yeah. There is a lot of uh, like comparisons here, I guess, to cooking. You yeah. know, learn the patience with fermentations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, cooking is a very patient game, right? Like, really I don't, is. I don't know, how, I don't, I don't know how to cook. So I mean, I'm just asking, no, no, is no, it? Of course. <laughs> yeah. I'm really asking, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, for sure. Because you guys are both cooks, actually. Yeah. You're a cook I really too. Love his. his I, I cook programs. for the homies. You know, he he owns restaurants, but for sure. Yeah, but it is a it is a big game of patience, right? Yeah. Yeah, and we, we show it, like in the chef show, we show it even as simple as a grilled cheese sandwich, right? Mm. That takes patience. Um, we tried to show in this show, like, simple things that you'll eat every day, and even in the Robert Rodriguez episode. The pizzas. Um, the pizzas, just simple things, but even a grilled cheese or a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, how many of those have you eaten in your life that are horrible? Right. And that's because you rush it. You right. know? But if you just take your moment and time, that grilled cheese will be the best grilled cheese you ever eat. Yeah, I, I want to talk about actually both shows because yeah. they're both so tight in its own ways. Um, and we've been watching them all together at the loft. Um, My house. <laughs> we go to the loft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But bro uh, Broken Bread, um, man, that show is great. Incredible. Thank I, I got to say, you. that is a great show. And just I, how would you describe what the show is? Well, like you opened up, like the two shows are two different parts of who I am as a person. Um, on one end, the chef show is me as a chef and a friend of John. Broken Bread is me as an activist. And mm -hmm. it's me as someone who thinks about the world very deeply and um, is using whatever power I have and whatever stage I have to make a difference, to leave some sort of imprint or tattoo on this world before I leave it physically, you know, mm -hmm. that means something that moves the needle. And that's something that's really important to me. And 
it's it's something that I can't talk about in everyday life because on one angle, some people don't want to hear it. Sometimes you bring down the mood of a room, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, or um, or whatever the case. But now with this format, I, I had the ability to talk about these deep, important things, but put some art behind it so that right. as you digest it doesn't feel like a lecture from your parents or something like that you know i mean from what i saw from the show it's like you highlight a lot of people who genuinely give a you know care about where the planet is heading yeah for sure you know how what that means for food Mm -hmm. right and and that was so interesting like the episode where they're looking at alternative sources for protein like this is like post-apocalyptic thinking (laughs) over here you know, and, and that was so crazy. Like, I didn't know people were doing this kind of work and having research groups and, you know, things yeah, like that. So when we d- designed the season, it was like, OK, how can we create a season that tries to tell the story of who what's important to us? And what I think um, are the problems, the broken systems in this world and how how can we find people that are fixing it instead of just talking about it? Right. So it was uh, food access, food justice, waste. I um, mean, I learned so much. The future of food. Um, we did a whole episode on Watts that we're screening tonight at the ArcLight, and um, and it was just things about like how much food is wasted in this world, um, right? You know, like what processed food is doing to our bodies, how much food is unaccessible for millions of people throughout this world. So we basically, if you looked at the equation of how much food is wasted and how many people are hungry in this world. Mm. That was kind of like our our North Star of how this show works. There's 40% of the food that we produce in this country is thrown away. That's crazy. It's crazy, right? And and then there's millions and millions of people starving um, in this country. So it's like we looked at that as kind of our basically our mood board of like how do we have this broken system yet we have so many people starving. Right, and then we start from there. We start to dive in into the racial aspects of it, wow. into the injustice. You know, I, I, I started with that. It's it's so complicated because yeah. you know I used to work at a um, like a vegetarian cafe <laughs> that was that yeah. that was focused on like macrobiotic food, yeah. but a lot of that you know is so dependent on the economic status of the community too. Yeah. But it's right. like it was so high priced, so it really contradicted its philosophies. Mm-hmm of how they serve food to the community, you know? That's uh, and true. It's, so, it's like a really difficult, I mean, are you pretty hopeful for where it's headed as far as food and this planet and people? That that was a part <laughs> of, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tough. I don't it's know. It's straight PBS it's right, there. right there. Um, I, I think that uh, what we tried to show in the show and what, I, what I, I've been fighting for and I learned is that even though we're in a bleak situation, the the solutions are actually pretty simple. The show just tried to sh- tried to tell the story that you just got to give a fuck a little bit, exactly. you know. And then actually, these huge problems like global warming, starvation, um, waste, uh, all these things, um, the livestock and the the, mm-hmm. the carbon footprint and emissions and right. all these things, you know, the our our desire and our love for eating hamburgers is actually worse than cars. So that's wild. What we the fact that's that we f- the the research that we found w- doing the show is it's not only worse than cars. It's worse than cars, buses, trains, and airplanes combined. The the, the existence of livestock within America. So that's so um, wild. but so you take this huge problem like how are we going to stop this emission and this carbon footprint and and we but what we showed is if you eat one less hamburger a week that right. will make a huge difference. So it's like breaking it all the way down from this global problem to like just fucking eat one less hamburger a week, <laughs> you know? Right. Or, or maybe try a vegan burger, you know? Maybe and, and try, maybe try an alternative source of meat. Maybe try a go to the uh, farmers market and, mm. and eat some fruit instead of some candy, you know, and really move yourself away. And it's like voting, right? If one little thing, if you multiply it actually makes a difference exactly. I, I, and you know i know impossible meats and those yeah. alternatives have the plant-based you know um, proteins have been like really getting popular yeah i'm wondering how much on a global level it's getting popular i think la mm. it's like very we're trendy yeah. with these kind of things you know i think they're like a fast food restaurant too now yeah they're in carl's jr now carl's jr yeah, yeah right. meats Beyond in carl's jr yeah. it's also in del taco wow um I tried it at your uh, uh, premiere. Oh yeah, the, the burger. That's right. You Delicious. know, yeah. I, I think if you cover it with flavor, it's They're like really yeah. Even if you were to notice, it's it's close enough to where you can you make get the that one yeah right. one difference a week. But um, but we showed in the episode that there's still 
I, we f- we filmed that future of food episode kind of like um it was a time capsule. So like I wanted to take the artistic approach. Like, what if we filmed this and no one saw it and mm-hmm. we put it in a time capsule and someone in the future, like 150 years later, dug it up, you know, and yeah. looked at it. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted them to look at it like, how the fuck <laughs> did you guys live like that? <laughs> right, you right. Know? Like you guys were killing these cows and right. throwing away half the food that you produce right. and all this stuff. So we filmed it kind of in that artistic sense and um. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like, what we showed in these uh, labs and, and especially Beyond Meat is that they're s- they still admit as well that they ha- they're not there yet. Mm. You know, they admit that we're still searching every single day to get to a point. And the, and the point, the cliff, is that there is no barrier to entry. And what he, what he meant by that is that wow. you could go to Talladega, NASCAR, or you could go yeah. to the middle of the country, or you could go to New York City up in the boroughs, up mm-hmm. in the Bronx or whatever, you know, and – and give this to a fourth of july barbecue backyard party and no one would know the difference but they're not there yet that was kind of a lot of the articles that i'm seeing about Mm -hmm. where we are right now as a planet have this kind of tone of a little too late kind of feel i mean you know what yeah. i mean like I'm, i mean it's never too late obviously to make change, oh like all the documentaries for, are for so a lot depressing of the, yeah for a lot of the you know like we're taking action now something we probably should have been doing like a hundred years ago or yeah, something right. you know and it's just like in that sense it's really depressing they're like oh in 2050 there'll be more plastic in the ocean than fish yeah that's <laughs> that's I mean, like that's like we're gonna be alive bro that's you know why I yeah, feel like alive. um Roy Hung, that your broken bread show, mm-hmm. it just reminds us that the power of one, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Especially when you feel like it's too late and we're behind, mm-hmm. you know, to, uh, I guess, um, you know, avoid the inevitable. We still believe that, okay, maybe picking this up, you know, yes. or, or eating this. Or be, I, I feel like being good mm-hmm. and, you know, nurturing and yeah. just, you know, feeding positivity you're kind of bringing that, like you're, you're making that cool. You know what I'm I mean? Trying, man. Yeah, no, you know, and, and I'm looking at the beads on your neck. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it, it it is it's not religious, but it does have some tenements of Buddhism in it. Nah, you know? for sure. But um, those are made out of beef. Those, those are, are those, are, those are beef, beef, beef jerky pulse. beads. Yeah, yeah, those are jerky beads. <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, well, I was gonna ask you this um, because you know it's such a difficult cycle to break. Also, when there's tradition involved with culture, right? Like even people, like. You know, say we go to Korea and like our grandparents want to feed us, yeah. and we're, we're just like down China. the street, Korean barbecue, all yeah, you can eat, exactly. Like, or gonna... you know, just just feeling like oh, like turning that down or right. something. You know, it's it's like it's it feels weird, right? Talking yeah. that to like a tradition, but also you know, it, it's it's kind of seeing the bigger picture, mm-hmm. you know. But it's also yeah. I mean, I mean, I remember when I first met you. It was four bops. Four right? bops. <laughs> four I'm, bops. Down, I'm down to one and a half. Now, you're down you know to one and a half. I'm but breaking the cycle. Right. But what we showed in the show is that, uh, and what you're touching on is, our level of eating has been designed for us. You know, it's actually not how we're supposed to eat as, as right. animals. You know, as humans, um, all that stuff has been created by this this marketing, right, advertising, um, commercial culture. You know, we're not supposed to eat a steak that's the size of this book. Right. You know. <laughs> um, we're only supposed to eat like this amount, of, maybe this amount of meat. Right, you know? that's so wild. And, um, <laughs> yeah, but all I'm that stuff fucked. has been created. Yeah, you're did you fucked. just? You're fucked. Did you just? Yeah. <laughs> did you just laugh at that portion right yeah. there? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, upset. <laughs> "I got upset." All you can eat Korean barbecues will boycott oh this show. That, uh, I mean, it's it's it is wild. The all yeah. you can eat idea, just that that phrase yeah. is yeah, just yeah. wild. That's wild. All you can eat, Fat and we we're in it. we're literally broadcasting from the midst of that that culture yeah of eating buffet style um and and all you can eat korean barbecue by the way is hasn't been around you know forever either no it, it's, it's the misconception been, is that korean food is based around meat it's not right you know mm. you, um, but you've talked about this a little yeah because yeah. that's another modern kind of introduction as well like if you look at our ancestors um yeah, be, you know uh before the infiltration of you know the modern western world and japanese culture if you go from about mid 1800s backwards it wasn't a meat-based culture right you know because there's no fucking yeah. cows our, our side yeah. dishes were our main dishes that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how gangs do it yeah yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. How, that's how poor yeah we you're i mean you're right like a lot of these meals that we see in Koreatown, like you, you mm-hmm. talked about this too, they they were supposed to be like for special occasion royalty meals, yeah. like yeah. the royal meals. Exactly. You yeah, know, we're eating it like for like lunch. Yeah, Kaibichim, I think it was once a year, maybe for for a normal person, probably. You know, 
Now we have cheese blow torching on that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? like it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What have we done? Yeah, what what have we done? <laughs> yeah, it's like a monster truck show every time yeah. we eat yeah, lunch yeah. now. <laughs> no, but Roy, but that's that's the thing. Your your title broken bread too. Like the uh -huh. system's broken. You yeah. Know? Mm. And there's cycles that we need to break. I agree. These things, even all you can eat. I, I say this conflicted because as as much as I agree with you, mm -hmm. I'm just looking at myself like, yeah. am I gonna be able to make that change? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Confidently. And I've, I, I always came up with this, uh, I always had this like metaphor. I feel like when there's a broken system, if it's like a clock and it's broken, mm -hmm. but time is life, right? You yeah. can't stop life and stop time and then fix the gears and take it out. Yeah. I feel like your attempt right now is while it's still going, yes. you're still trying to repair it while it's moving. Do you know what I mean? That's a great metaphor. The, uh, very similar metaphor is like fixing the engine while the airplane's while still flying. Exactly. Right. It's, yeah. it, that's basically what we're trying to do. That's what I know. feel like. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's weird because, you know, in one side, I feel like things are changing because you hear so much about these alternative like you know a lot of these vegan burger spots and all yeah. that but on the other end you have like <laughs> mukbanging which is like the, <laughs> right. the craziest other opposite end of one dude eating yeah. like shout out matt Stone. <laughs> yeah uh -huh. dude eating eight crabs in front of the yeah. camera and everyone just loving right this yeah. you know and it's it's i don't know where it's shifting really well i think the only hope that i can give anyone listening to this is that you know it's okay to be on a journey like right. even me i started a company that's called meat you know kogi <laughs> right you know? and that's true, um, true. but i'm evolving as a person you yeah. know and um you know even though i'm a little bit older like y you know you should never stop evolving you mm -hmm. know I, right. I think a part of it also grows into like especially in this country we we reach a certain place where we think that life somehow ends and you stop exactly you stop being creative or you stop evolving um okay to keep evolving it's okay to be at one point and be ridiculous and and whatever and then continue to evolve and be somewhere else i like know? what you just said right yeah. there because i feel like um what you said about creativity and yeah. stop evolving right because you came into this doing meat based food right yeah, exactly. and if, if you don't find alternatives which i you know with um mm -hmm. cooking i find it to be art right mm -hmm. so it's like you're being lazy with your creativity yeah. If you're not trying, you know, if you're not trying to do yeah. something different, you're just being lazy. It's like yeah. a comedian, you know, doing the, the same, same joke. jokes or a rapper. Yeah. In their mid 30s, even though they hit <laughs> 15 years earlier, still doing the same, right. you know, right. I think there's bars. a lot. There's a lot yeah. of that element where people compl art artists complain about the state of the world and they yeah. can't do their jokes anymore. I, I feel like a part of that is also laziness a little bit. It is, you know, right. because it's like. The world is gonna change without you, yeah. with, with you or without you. You yeah. know what I mean? And you're not, you know, you're not adapting and finding ways to make people laugh in in, in different ways. Yeah. You know. So I mean, I take that another step further. Like it is definitely laziness, but also as creators or entertainers and as chefs, we're feeding the people. Yep. You know what I mean? And there's people that f you know, there's cooks that feed you know just hazardous poison pretty much yeah cancerous foods yeah and then there's people like you who are trying to you know bring the nutrition back same with music i believe you know yeah. i believe that there's the ones making money off just you know and i'm not trying to get into like morality and music but just you know trash and yeah. and and healthy music but that's a no that's a really great point because that's what broken bread is all about the, the power of broken bread is that it's not and there's nothing wrong with a show being hidden way deep in the annals of YouTube or anything. Right. But this is a primetime show For sure. on two huge networks, right? And so the idea is that right now, most of the stuff you're touching on is pop culture is that cancerous environment, right? Because right? we created a culture where we think that all of the lowest com common denominator stuff, whether it's food or music or whatever, is the only thing that sells. Mm. What we're trying to do is show that something a little bit deeper can sell as well yeah you know and um and it's okay to be at a place where you're not fully woke yet it's all right and not that's what sure. we're trying to show is like that journey is a part of if wherever you wake up yeah. is your journey and you just got to realize that a lot of the stuff is designed for you like the food that you eat and the cancerous stuff that's going on the music that fills your ears mm -hmm. with all of that noise that stuff is all designed to keep you basically um brainwashed yeah, yeah i mean i mean and, and you know i really commend you for yeah. really trying to make things happen with a lot of sacrifice beyond putting money in your pockets you, mm -hmm. you've done local right yeah. and you know local closed down and what like how did you feel about 
when that closed down? Was there wow, wow, like, was there a sense of kind of disappointment with people wanting to you know what I mean support it in the way yeah. maybe you expected them to or it's one of those things where um, on the inside everyone knows like what we were about um, it was just kind of the um, I guess the haters and, and the headlines you mm -hmm. know uh, I, I but, remember you were kind of going yeah, back yeah. with like food critics and stuff right but it goes back to the deepness of I guess what I call you know um, it's basically in, it's um deep racism you know mm, because right. what it is is it's just saying a certain tagline to make sure that the uh, basically the racism of uh, of condition culture is right. continued exactly. you know mm -hmm. so like look see they couldn't make it happen you right know? Mm. you know the ghetto will always be the ghetto and, another l and, yeah another yeah. l and it's easy to say that from a chair writing an article yeah um but they don't look at all the little things all the and you guys are artists so i think you'll appreciate it is all the nuances mm -hmm. We were all open almost three years. All the relationships that we built, all um, there are many people that started eating local that got taken off their diabetes medicine wow. because they would eat local every day and filled their body with grains and vegetables and fruits. Um, the influence we had on the schools and the neighborhoods, the, the 40 jobs that we created. Right. Half of those jobs, half of the people that worked with us have moved on now into a career within the within the restaurant industry that would have never had that opportunity before. Mm. Now they're creating disciples within themselves. So that that's all success to me. And local's not dead completely. We what I stressed was that the retail element didn't work at that time because the, the city of Watts in the three years we were there, there were no new businesses that came in. Mm. So the economy was the same. Right, right. But we're evolving it into something. We're going to turn it into like a tech-based uh, app mm. thing where uh, we're going to start very small, kind of like in a beta program and try to grow it out where it's like it's like a delivery service on your phone, right. but it will be um, for for the hood. You know? you know, as a lyricist, that whole double entendre, yeah. keeping it local was yeah. local, you know? Yeah, yeah. It was crazy, and you <laughs> yeah. did it. The double Thank entendres you. really <laughs> turned me on. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, yeah. no, no, Even but what beyond I mean, the food, the double yeah, entendre, yeah. though. You know, regardless <laughs> whether it closed on or not, it was crazy, and you did it. And yeah. I think that's what rever reverberates, you know what I mean? Yeah. And now, now you're on Netflix. Now you got shows, so your mm -hmm. name is out there. You're present. I think you're going to have, I mean, there's going to be opportunities, I think, to do mm -hmm. stuff like that again and again obviously more at because i, I yeah. texted him i was like oh your stock is up now yeah. <laughs> like, the stock is up, stock yeah. is um, up. i mean i didn't even think about this right now because i'm so focused on the shows but you know you also have best friend that just opened up in vegas yeah it's been a big year and it's so I'm, I'm just thinking like wow you've had a really great year and mm -hmm. i mean this isn't the stuff that just happened within the last year there's been preparation for mm -hmm. these openings and and these new uh tv shows you just did yeah i mean how's the how's the uh the new restaurant in vegas doing that's a whole nother <laughs> It's like such a different thing from all these things we're talking about. Like Bro, broken just, bread, but there's also this Vegas restaurant. Let me explain this to you real quick. Yeah. I was popping the yolk in my kimchi fried rice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listening to Chronic 2001. Right. Oh, that's right. In the MGM casino, dude. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, that just feels weird. It's hip hop, Korean food, uh -huh. straight up Los Angeles culture. Roy just made like a Petri dish within the casino. It's crazy. He has his yeah. own little... He has his own little corner in that casino yeah. bro and yeah. it's it's yeah i so guess it's, proud it's you, my man. contribution to korean culture you know like i didn't grow up in korea so yeah, this was right. me as a korean you know yeah. giving it to the world on the biggest stage which is las vegas you know so but i think with best friend if you can like with best friend broken bread the chef show all these things uh, i guess what i'm showing right now in this moment in time is that y you a person you don't as you as a person don't have to be one thing you know yeah. like a lot of times we get trapped in the idea that you just have to be a rapper, mm -hmm. you know, but but we're, we're all like you can be someone that gets drunk and wiles out and has fun, mm -hmm. you know, and, and be a politician and be a politician. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, There's those plenty of those, actually. actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you can have different elements of your personality. You can sure. you can be, you know, have fun, be a gambler, drink, you know, listen to hip hop, have a great time and also be serious at the same time. And then yeah. also be a teacher and a chef and, you know, like. You know, it's like you can have different elements of your personality. We all do. There's a lot of times we don't have that ability to do them professionally. What I'm showing is that you can also do them professionally. Hell like yeah. best friend, broken bread, and chef are three very different sides of who I am as a person. You right. Know? And um, but they're now living in their own kind of world. What, what you know? have you found? You know, like the most difficult for you 
you know, to share your message far as all the outlets that you've had far as books and TV shows? Has there been something a little bit like what's been most challenging, I would say, because these are things that you're kind of learning as you go along, yeah. too. Right. Well, restaurants are the hardest, you mm-hmm. know, um, because although Best Friend is doing well, not every restaurant does well all the time. Mm. So I know it's um, it, it's sometimes a great imagination for people, especially like even you, who who's a really great cook. Right. Mm. There may be drops of dreams that where people tell you, man, you should open a restaurant, right? mm-hmm. you know, because your food is really good. And so we all get that, but um, the restaurant business is so hard. The man, logistics, you know? all that. It's so hard, yeah. And even when you're at the top of your game, you know, you have chefs that are closing restaurants and opening restaurants at the same time. And um, so it really fucks with your your, your brain because uh, you have to deal with failure and success at the right. same time. Right. And you have to be kind of like committed to both. It's a really weird it's and a not really only weird that, situation. As like just yeah. in the kitchen, you know, you're, you're worried about the taste and like mm-hmm. you know the execution of the cooking, and then now you have to worry about the ambiance, the aesthetics, right. you know, the the mm-hmm. service, the people, all that. everything. That's, yeah. Oh, that's crazy. I, I think that's know. kind of a cool element to yeah. you know. Obviously, it all starts with the food, but kind of putting your creative yeah. uh, directing to work on that. Yeah. The visuals of but how it, everything's going like, to be presented. It's like uh, making an album. A right. show is is a lot of work. It's hard work, but Oof. once it's out there. Once it's out there, it's out there. Yeah. But a restaurant, the difference with a restaurant, and I wouldn't trade it for anything because that's a, a part of the grind too. But you, once you open it, it's not just out there. Right. Mm. It's every single day you have to keep. Right. You have to keep it alive. Damn. Yeah. So it's um, it's different. It's different than just birthing something. You know, it's like you got to keep it alive. You know? let, let me um ask you about the the chef show in particular. I know it's yeah, getting yeah. hot in here. I'm sorry, guys. No, no, all good. Actually, I could turn on the AC. Sorry, it's, right. it's not. It's gonna be a little. But um, I was going to say, uh, you know, what, what the relationship you have with uh, John, you know, one thing I really loved about the show um, also is just kind of John's eagerness to learn yeah, as amazing, a cook. Yeah. Like he really is into yeah. this. Like yeah. he wants to learn and he's it's not even a show. He's literally like. He's like, he was like, yo, Roy, I'm, it's just like, I want to do this show because I want to learn more shit from yeah. you. <laughs> like, it just felt like that. You I know what I mean? I even sense a little confidence, too. You know, a little pride in what he could do, too. Oh, yeah. He, to yeah show he, you up he, sometimes bit. he tries to show yeah, it, show and, he, and he's grown a lot, and <laughs> right, he continues right. to want to learn. You know, like, he's truly, he's truly committed to this life. I see it sometimes when, like, lately a lot of homies get into uh, Brazilian, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they get into that, and then it becomes this lifelong journey. Right. And um, it's like that for him, you know. Um, like I've become his kind of sensei in a way. I knew it was and, real. Uh, <laughs> yeah. When you're like his knife, he's like he's very nice with the knife. Yeah. His smile. He was yeah. like, oh, oh, with the serrano. Yeah, yeah, with the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah was those so are happy. real moments. Yeah. Exactly. It's like there's. I see while watching the show, like where moments you're you're like surprised like by <laughs> yeah. the progress he's making in, in sure. real time, you for know. Sure. And a lot of my teachings to him are very literal, but through that. You know, every relationship is is a two way exchange. His his influence on me has been a little more stealth. Right. So mine has been very direct. Where I show him a knife cut, he's perfected it and he's moved on, or he learns how to cook. But through the years that I've known now, it's almost six years. I've learned how to be a storyteller. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that relationship helped me make broken bread or tell the story and like best friend build a restaurant right. that is built around telling a story or. Um, and I think eventually where I want to go from here is maybe create my own production company or agency or something mm-hmm. so I can put people on mm. or look be it someone where I can I can give opportunities to tell to different types of foods, tell different types of stories, yeah. produce movies, produce uh, albums, whatever the case may be. So eventually all of that relationship, John has taught me how to be a storyteller. You wow. know, um, and I don't know. It's it, And he geeks out because I get him into rooms where it's like chefs he admires like david chang and myself in a room but right i'm the same way man i'm in a room with robert rodriguez and <laughs> yeah that was and i mean john it. favreau the two kind of pioneers of independent film as we know it and i'm sitting there like just soaking up all that knowledge yeah, you know? yeah and there's little uh you know things that are getting shared online that's very it's like spreading virally yeah. you know <laughs> when like uh, gwyneth paltrow's talking about how she didn't know she was yeah. a spider-man like i saw that just separately getting shared so yeah. it was really cool to see these things from I think you it's the first time i ever trended yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I, the, the show is cool though because I it's really yeah. there's like I said it's very voyeuristic in a yeah, way exactly. there's no like hey guys this today we're gonna mm-hmm. make you know what I mean it's not like that it's I mean, there's like, big names but they don't seem like celebrities like a listers in the show you know they just seem like homies yeah they just seem like uh, people in the kitchen just you know. yeah they're there and yeah like the Bill Burr one Bill Burr oh, yeah man, that was so He's good the best. that one was great yeah. he the was like, that was actually the most like chill and yeah. like non asshole yeah. kind of vibe that yeah, I yeah. Yeah. I've ever seen him yeah not that he's an asshole but he's just very I've you never know. seen him smile that much you know what I mean <laughs> oh, yeah. ever I don't want to give up too much but uh-huh. there was something in the episode where you just kept it real you're like yo this whole thing's about being real you know what I mean uh-huh. so you couldn't lie oh that was yeah. the fucking was funniest the mo- like <laughs> that's how I knew <laughs> that show like you weren't gonna you weren't doing it for the gram you know you weren't doing it for the cameras you're like nah this the is seeing nice. your face like cause it's like it's like you're <laughs> always so nice like people yeah, but then <laughs> that moment your face you was just, it was just so real you're oh. like uh yeah that, and, then, and then John also agreed at the yeah, same time like yeah. okay you know you guys gotta <laughs> check it out man that, that's that's great I, I really I really dug that was kind of like a really a bonus to me Crazy. after watching Broken Bread, and I really, man, I, I can't stress this enough. I really love uh-huh. that show, and it's Thank like you. the the it's so thorough yeah. in how you break it down, which each, each episode mm-hmm. exploring a different topic, yeah. but ultimately kind of the same thing. Yep, and it's just like man, that that I was like really really impressed and shot beautifully too. Amazing. Thank you. That is a L.A. great like yeah. addition to L.A. culture. I feel like it's crazy. You know, I, I yeah. admire your ability to kind of you're versatile. You're like you could be front lines on Broken Bread. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Lead the activist. Yeah. And then sometimes on Chef, you know, I know I know you're part of the characters, but you play the ambiance. I take, I take, I take you play the, the ambiance. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's when I see that. That just right kind shotgun. Of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but for real. That's you for know? real. Yeah. And then, you know, best friend, you're the man over there. So it's yeah. just, I see the elements. Well, I appreciate kind of that you see that because that, I mean, that's a real important life lesson. I think that now I'm in a position to give life lessons. Right. And, and I'm glad you see those things is that sometimes in life, you got to know how to be a number two to be a number mm-hmm. one, you mm-hmm. know? And that's something that we don't teach enough right now, you know, because everyone wants to be a number one. For sure. Right. You know, that you, is the culture we live and, in. And yeah. especially you want to blow up right away overnight. Right. But you got to you got to know how to be a number two or number three or number four or number 20. You know, you got to know what it means to be the building block to that pyramid. You know, and um, and there are moments where it it is actually more important for you to to be a silent support mechanism, you know, Um, and that really comes from a kitchen environment. You know, sometimes when you're in a kitchen, um, it's really important, even if you're at the top of your game, sometimes you got to like you know you got to be the support for whoever's shining at that moment right and you can't let your ego get in the way it's like team basketball or whatever the case may be you know? right 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 you know <laughs> sometimes you got to pass the rock exactly you know right. and but ultimately that leads to the win so for you know, sure. sometimes the moment's yours you know so that's beautiful man. did um the shows that you, you've knocked out all the production stuff for these yeah. two shows um do you have anything else in the works that you know you don't I'm have to talk about? Trying to get a season about. two for Broken Bread, so hey, that, yeah, hey, KCT yeah. taste made where you at? <laughs> and is yeah. that is that the, the process for that? Is just you kind of just waiting around for them to be like, yo, we want to do a season two, or how does that? I happen? try to stay out of my business stuff. Don't, right, you know that's probably one yeah. thing that I've really made a commitment to. Um, I'm aware of it, right? And um, and I'm still the captain, and I and I um, I'm the oversight committee, so like I'll jump in where I need to. But I try to stay out of business, so right. because because um, ultimately I'm an artist. So what happens yeah. is I get a warped sense of commerce and money, right, and sometimes right. I'll you know I'll either get pissed off or I'll <laughs> yeah. give myself up for too little. Well, it's it's also you know, another you know it's a thing that you're you put into your yeah. uh, everyday thing, and it's it's stressful if you throw stressful, that into yeah. on top of all on the top things of you're already else. doing. Because ultimately, they don't have to on top of that go in front of the camera, you yeah. know, and so. Um, what I try to do is, you know, I have shout out Natasha. I have Natasha who runs uh, my day to day on yeah. everything. And so um, she she knows exactly what I believe in and where my red flags are. And then I have an agent, you right. know, and um, and they deal with it. And so I'm just waiting for them to negotiate the deals. I, right I would love to see that, like, end up yeah. in one of these streaming platforms too. the broken yeah. bread. I mean, yeah, um, I hope sure. just yeah. to kind it of needs a bigger platform. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It really does. Mm-hmm. Man, but it, I mean, you know, KCT did a great job on, yeah. on the the production of it. It's it's beautifully shot. It's the best we could do with the platforms that we had. You know, like yeah. we we stretched it a mile. You know, like we stretched it all the way. But there is a difference, especially because I saw the shows come out back to back. 
man, the difference between um, the exposure Broken Bread had. Right, right, You know, that's right. grassroots stuff. Like, I still have to push myself out there, promote it, right. like, really champion. It's like you going on tour. Like, you got to really fill the arenas. Exactly. Right, or fill the, fill the, the venues. Um, whereas the chef show is like, got the machine is the there. world tour. You were just kind of yeah, chilling. Like, you didn't have to really. <laughs> you're it's just the like, world tour. Yeah. The, yeah. The, 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 you're just the, reposting the stuff that people already <laughs> posted. <Yeah. laughs> the arena, the arena's yeah. already sold out, you know? Right, right, right. You know? What, what is, so. That's like what Breezy's going through right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So that's like, that stuff's already sold out. Yeah, because it's like, like yeah, cause he yeah. already has a lot of, co- like, everyone yeah. co-signs him, yeah. you know? So he didn't really have to. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, um, and that's, I mean, was just the conception of that, the chef show in particular, was uh-huh. that something that John approached him was like, yo, we want to do the show? Yeah, or yeah. was, uh, what was the. So after the movie, um, we remain friends, but uh, it's kind of like we both, like, he, he, his example was like summer camp. Uh-huh. Like, we were the best of friends yeah, in yeah, summer yeah. camp, but we I had to go that. back to yeah, our lives. Like you a know? relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, was it was like a summer fling. <laughs> summer fling. Yeah. It was a, and then we had to go back to our lives. And we remained friends, and, and we saw each other probably still like five, six times a year, and, and still very, very close. Like, nothing <laughs> changed. But there was like no driving reason to, to, right. to, to spend more time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, but we wanted to, so we just kept thinking of ideas like, what can we do to like spend more time together? Yeah, you know? it's yeah. like it was truly a love story. It's good, you right. know. And um, and then so it was like, first, is it a restaurant? Is it like a? Do we write a book? You right. know, um, do we make a sequel? Um, and then eventually, it took a while, but eventually it was the show, you know. And and it came in those moments where, and sometimes the biggest things come in like, like the most unexpected moments. Like we were still in the stage where we didn't know what we wanted to do, and then he just like was sitting in Atlanta, and he's like, "Wait a second, I got these cameras. We got a little free time. Right. Why don't you fly out? Yeah. Let's just try this." That's and so it was bad. like it was like setting this up, you know. Wow, that's that's, sick. that's how that's how like simple it was at the beginning, and how easy it was. It was like let's not look too far into the future. Let's just set up a few cameras. Right. Get the table going. We'll cook a little bit and let's. Even let's the menu go. items, it was a revisitation of like the stuff yeah. in the movie. And that you was know, the early go, stuff. That's that a great. Amazing. That's yeah. a great observation. Yeah. So we wanted to start really small because that was still in the kind of like rehearsal stage. Mm-hmm. Like, is this anything that mm-hmm. anyone would ever want to watch? So let's start with the recipes first before we get too deep. And um, I mean, and the Cubano was genius. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like, and, and yeah. ended up pre- being pretty good. You know, yeah. I mean, when you start off sitting with uh, Spider Man and yeah. you know Tom Holland <laughs> I remember and he Robert Downey, yeah, like you know, oysters, right? For the first yeah, time, I mean, the kid's only what, like eighteen, nineteen. So I, that, that's I guess true. I, I didn't get even it. think yeah. about. I didn't even yeah, think yeah, about yeah. that. <laughs> Maybe he's older. I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember my the, my first oyster. I guess. But, <laughs> hey, uh, how old's Tom Holland? Yeah. How old's Tom Holland? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay. 21 22, yeah. She just knows by heart. Yeah, like, knows, yeah. <laughs> hey, I got my kid here. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Siri, awesome. yeah. <laughs> now, uh, what, what was John Favreau's level of cooking expertise like w- prior? right before, prior to you working with him on, on Chef? Um, well, I think he grew up around, a f- he grew up in families that cooked a lot. Okay. Um, he grew, uh, Half of his family is Italian, the other half is Jewish. and um, So he grew up around a lot of food. He grew up in Queens. Mm. So uh, he was surrounded by a lot of food. Um, I don't know. I know he worked in bars yeah. and as a bartender and um, probably as an actor worked as, you know, throughout restaurants and stuff. But I don't think he um, had cooked that much or ever cooked professionally for sure. But he just yeah. really got into it. Um, really got into yeah. it. Yeah. I could, I could just tell on the, on the chef show. It just feels like for that. For sure. Yeah. It was one of those things where... Um, He's like, I get to surround myself with some master chefs yeah. for the yeah. whole Food season. And, 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 you know, like being the person that he was, I'm sure he was taking care of a lot. Right. But he saw, once he started hanging out with me, the the difference in how he was taking care of when he's with the chef. Right. So when you're a celebrity, you're taking care of a certain way. Mm. You know, people are just really like yeah. fawning over you and taking care of you and serving you, you know, just illustrious things and stuff like that. But when you're with the chef, it's like um, it's more respect, exactly. you know, and so less saw, fluff, less fluff. And you saw the difference in that. So, yeah, I like, mean, you know, dumb. I didn't even start cooking, you know, a couple years. I yeah, let's talk about your cooking. Couple, thing. No, no, I mean, I, I could I understand where John's coming from, because yeah. once you start making food. Yeah. And you feed people and they enjoy it. Yeah. You know, and you're you get better at it. Mm-hmm. You just want to stay at, you know, you want to keep advancing your skills. So you know? when did it? When did 
they'd start getting really serious for you. Because now you're getting really serious. At first, I remember when I first met you. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was just dabbling with it. You were it. dabbling. It started off, uh, I made kimchi, you know. Yeah. I tango kimchi at yeah. home. And I, I put it on the Instagram. It was just a couple, a couple, you know, a couple clips for a series. And people were just like, damn, just a duality of, I guess, like a yeah. rap, Korean American yeah. rapper making kimchi, like yeah. my grandma stuff with like, you know, salted shrimp and stuff like that. Yeah. It was just that, it, it was interesting to them, you know? Right. So I started making more dishes. And then now the boom bop episodes, uh, the new episodes are now, you know, more music, just more yeah. music based, you know? So I t- have a producer. Roy, we need to get you on yeah, one. You let's know do I mean? it. It'll be let's do one. Yeah, I'll make the beat. Oh, that'd be great. It. I yeah. want to really see that. I, be, I mean, be also, nice. I think it worked out for him because he's really good at these detailed raps, like step yeah. by step raps. Yeah. So like the way he, I, it's probably one of the best raps I've seen anybody do, like description mm-hmm. step by step. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's so That's good. True. It's so clear to understand. That's why I really like. If I would pitch that as a show, like you could yeah. start yeah. like a, you could start like a Kumon uh, <laughs> 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 learning true. program. I mean, with it, your raps. the truth is, yeah, they do apply these things to yeah. a lot of these educational programs for sure because like, it's a good way to memorize stuff. It's yeah. like how I'm Sesame s- Street is, Sesame right? Street yeah. And you know, I mean, like seriously, like you, sure. you could start a whole Sesame Seeds. No, okay. Sesame, Sesame Seeds. Seeds. <laughs> Sesame <laughs> Sell, sell oh seven, seven discs the online. Sesame you know? seeds. <laughs> Come and hang with Sesame right. seeds. You know, I'm going to stack a few episodes, you know what I mean? Package uh-huh. it and, you know, show yeah, it to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it will be a beautiful thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know what else to say. You've covered a lot of grounds at this okay. point. This past year, I feel like you've knocked out so many things. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what's on your bucket list still as far as, you know, your, your goals, your goal bucket list of what you how you want to spread it? your food and your message you know the crazy thing about life is that i would have never i i would have never imagined this year ever happening for me right like uh, this would have been just a dream mm-hmm. you know and um i know you guys are reaching every day it's that that moment you break through right like you really break through and you know having a show on netflix on taste made kct and opening a re- the, the <laughs> hottest restaurant on the las vegas come trip, on right? come on come on yeah, yeah the, the, right you know, come on but, but you, know, you know what that does for us, you know? Yeah. That's inspiration. That's just like, that's evidence that we could do it. But the crazy thing is what I'll, I'll knowledge I can give is that someone that's going through it right now mm. is what it does is it actually feels like the beginning. Mm. That's the weird part. Mm. Yeah. It feels like these, these goals that you set for yourself and these dreams, and, I, you know, I know you guys will get there. And when you get there, what's weird is that, it, you know, um, it feels like just the beginning of something that you never saw yet, you know? Yeah. So, like, when you ask me that, it's like, I feel like I'm just getting started. I feel like I, um, now I have a whole new world, a whole new side of myself that I can explore. Like, I can maybe start, again, like I s- mentioned earlier, my own production company. Yeah. I can start my own studio maybe in 10 years, you know? Maybe I'll be someone that is actually producing and green lighting these shows it, ma- it makes sense because i feel yeah. like you wouldn't have been able to see th- like if you're a young you person it. back in the day like uh, aspiring chef right mm. your ultimate goal would have been like i want to open my chef. own restaurant yep. and be a chef yeah like you didn't have celebrity chef culture nah. Come back on. then right Come like, well the first goal is just to be a chef just right, chef. right. You know? yeah. so just to be a chef at some someone else's restaurant and then that once you become a chef then you're like wait you know i can i can do this i can run so everything's a step it is crazy you know? i think i think a lot right now for younger chefs there's so many things you can do with mm-hmm. being a chef yeah because you see people putting out books tv shows yeah. and you know before i could only imagine it's like i just want to open a restaurant yeah you even see it in the biggest artists like well, let's take uh most current one like a rihanna for example right right like she became one of the biggest artists and when now she's has her own clothing line clothing and that's makeup, gonna develop yeah, all that. makeup and then that moved to london and that now you know i'm sure she's going through on a bigger level what i'm going through is right. you get to these points where you you reach the pinnacle and you realize again that's only the beginning of the next journey and right. um it's just it's really it's c- it comes down to art really of yeah. how you want to express yourself in different mm-hmm. ways because you're not gonna always just want to tr- do one medium yeah you know man yo that's crazy yeah. i just yeah i i that's what i think about i just never want to be on a reunion tour i never want to be like yeah this is how i see you know your career 
ending yeah. um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're gonna be quiet like after you do all your things you're gonna yeah. kind of be like yo i just want to chill for a little bit be quiet for a bit <laughs> mm-hmm. and then you're gonna end up in um the celebrity dance show yes <laughs> uh learning different styles of dance yes yeah oh like uh, yeah it's like you guy fieri yeah. a bunch of these celebrity chefs uh, it's gonna be chef dance off that's like, my nightmare that's man i just i, I i've created i have one thing on my wall just never end up playing the bingo casino you know <laughs> 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 right next to best friend, yeah, right just next to best friend. <laughs> he's on the penny slots yeah. just <laughs> young you've been to every show uh-huh. you've brought burritos to our spot you know what i mean you've you've shown us love we respect you so much young you know thank you and you exactly what you said starting from me and kogi for you to retrace the steps Mm -hmm. and reflect and be like okay maybe i need to switch it up you know using your celebrity status you could have really gotten to the money the bread you know Mm -hmm. but you're talking about what's broken about it you know what i mean and that conscious (laughs) decision (laughs) if you don't stop doing wordplay with conscious (laughs) decision (laughs) swear that conscious decision young thank you you're the truth uh chef roy Choi. make sure you check out best friend if you're ever in vegas which is located in mgm the park mgm park which is MGM. uh uh right next door to new york new york it's the old monte carlo <laughs> and they put like 680 million into that motherfucker you yeah know, like, and then in los angeles he still has you know the kogi brick kogi and mortar truck, yeah. mm-hmm. kogi trucks around um a frame mm-hmm. Um, Alibi Room, Kogi Taqueria, all that. Tons wow. of stuff. There's always stuff you can look up. Always, you know, you got the book. Where's my book at? Oh, I don't have it here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, L.A. Sun. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the t- congrats on the TV show Broken Bread, The Chef Show. Did I leave out anything? I think that's, that, that's Roy where Choi's Roy Choi is at. We're <laughs> Roy Choi's boys. This is our podcast, Roy Choi's boys, <laughs> where you will hear Roy Choi's voice. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Young. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank Tune you. in next week for another amazing guest. Love you, brother. Um, peace. <laughs>